Hello and welcome to this presentation relating to calculating volumes using standard formulae. This is part one of the lecture. This presentation does assume you've seen a previous presentation relating to calculating areas using standard formulae and also calculating volumes of prismatic sections as various formulae and techniques from those presentations will underpin the work we're going to review here. Here's a brief overview of the volume and surface area formulae that are outlined within this presentation. Note for reference, the square brackets stated below indicate approximate start times in minutes for the various topic areas. So formulae relating to the volume and surface area of a cylinder is found approximately three minutes into the presentation. An example using the formulae commences approximately four minutes into the presentation. The cone is considered approximately six minutes into the presentation and there is also a proof for the cone that commences approximately six and a half minutes into the presentation. This is the only proof that's contained in the presentation. All other formulae are stated without proof. An example of how to use the cone formulae so it's approximately 12 minutes into the presentation. The pyramid formulae with an example commences 60 minutes in and the sphere and hemisphere formulae stated approximately 80 minutes in with an example commencing approximately 19 and a half minutes in. The rest of the presentation relates to tutorial questions as found in our workbooks. So question 1a, which is actually broken into five parts, commences approximately 23 minutes into the presentation. This question considers prismatic sections as well as the cone, the pyramid and the sphere. Questions 2a to 4a, approximately 33 minutes into the presentation, and that overviews prismatic sections. Question 5a to 7a, approximately 38 minutes into the presentation. And they encompass calculations related to cylinders. Questions 8a through to 10a, approximately 42 minutes in. They relate to conical hoppers, troughs and hemispheres. Solutions to all these questions are shown within the presentation. And finally, questions 11a through to 13a, approximately 49 minutes into the presentation, are left for you to review and solve at your own pace. Let's now consider formulae relating to the calculation of volumes of simple shapes. Let's first of all consider a cylinder. The volume of a cylinder V is equal to the area of the end, shown here, denoted as pi d squared upon four, where d is the diameter of the vessel, and that's multiplied by the height or the length of the vessel, shown here as h. I've also shown the formula for the surface area, A, of a closed cylindrical vessel. Again, we calculate the area of an end of the vessel, that's the pi d squared upon 4, same as up here, different format. But we multiply that by 2 this time, because of course there are two ends of a closed cylindrical vessel. We add to that the curved surface area, and that's calculated by pi multiplied by d, which calculates the circumference here. So here. And then we multiply that by h, and that calculates this surface area shown here. And again, noting in these formulae, the d is the diameter of the cylinder and h is stated as the height or the length of the cylinder. Let's consider an example. A cylindrical vessel holds 15 litres of petrol. We're asked to calculate the depth of the petrol if the cylindrical vessel has a diameter of 600 millimetres. So from our previous work related to volumes, 
we know that 15 litres is equivalent to 15 times 10 to the power 6 millimetres cubed. So from the above formula for volume, V is equal to pi d squared h divided by 4, which is this equation written on one line. We simply insert the volume V here and the diameter D here. On the next line, 600 squared divided by 4 is 90,000, written as 90 times 10 to the power of 3 here. Finally, rearranging for the depth or the height, that becomes 15 times 10 to the 3 divided by 90 times pi. Just notice I divided this line throughout by 10 to the power of 3. So that evaluates to an approximate depth of the petrol in the vessel of 53 millimetres. Our next formula relates to a cone, the volume of a cone here is given as pi d squared multiplied by h or divided by 12. Where the d is the diameter of the base of the cone and h is the height or the length of the cone. I've also shown the formula for surface area, which includes the base here. So A is equal to pi dL divided by 2, or L is a slant length. And add to that pi d squared upon 4, which of course is the area of the base. And using Pythagoras theorem to calculate the slant length L, shown here, L is equal to the square root of, in brackets, h squared plus r squared, where r is the radius of the base. Here is the triangle considered. Most of the formulae outlined in this presentation are stated without proof, but I have had students ask me in the past as to how the formulae are derived. So this is just a brief overview of the proof related to the volume of a cone formula. And the topic area we're considering here is integration and the method is the volume of revolution. I'm only showing this for reference as the level of math shown in this proof is above the level at which the volumes presentation is aimed. But for anyone that has covered the calculus before and integration specifically, this is how the volume of a cone equation is derived. As with all such integration problems, we consider an elemental strip of our cone, this strip shown here. I mentioned y in this case, and this strip y is some distance x in from the base of the cone. So this is x is equal to naught here when the radius is capital R. And when x is equal to h here, we have the top of the cone when there is no radius. And the thickness of the strip is dx. So basically what we're going to do is consider the volume of revolution about the center line shown here. So considering this elemental strip revolved 360 degrees about the center line, we can work out the volume of this very, very thin strip. It would be basically pi y squared, that would be the area of a circle, and then multiplied by the thickness, which is dx in this case. If we now integrate with respect to x between the limits of x is equal to zero, and x is equal to h, we will find the volume of revolution of this cone. Just notice that the y variable here has to be written in terms of a function of x, and this is the function of x that we will be using. It's shown derived up here for reference, and essentially if you consider the limits of the integral with this equation here, when x is equal to zero, then the y is equal to r, so that's at the base. And when x is equal to h, we have 1 minus 1, essentially, because h divided by h is 1. So we'll have y is equal to 0, and that's what we have at the top of the cone. So this expression for y calculates the radius anywhere along the center line. I won't go through the solution in detail, but I've labored each of the steps in this process of generating the integral. And basically these steps here are generating the standard integral shown here. Notice the pi and the r squared are constants, so they're outside the integral sign.
I'll let you follow these individual steps at your own pace should you want to. This is now a standard form. So each of these terms are integrated using the AX to the N standard form, which we reviewed in a previous presentation on integration. And on the next slide, we will integrate the standard form. Here's the proof of the volume of a cone continued. Here's a solution to the integral shown here. Each of these terms from the previous slide have been integrated with respect to X. They're all standard forms, AX to the N. All that's happened here is we've simplified the second term because the twos cancel top and bottom of this term. Then we impose our limits. The upper limit is H in this case. So we see an X in this expression. We replace it with a H. So H, H, and H replaces the three X's here. And this particular integral, the lower limit is zero. So all the terms disappear when we insert X is equal to zero. The next two lines show the simplification inside the bracket here. And that culminates in the volume of a cone formula, V is equal to pi r squared h divided by 3. That's a volume expression in terms of the radius r. And in a standard textbook, the volume of a cone is sometimes expressed as a third multiplied by the pi r squared h. Same equation. However, in this presentation, we've expressed the volume of a cone in terms of diameter. So noting that the radius r is equal to the diameter divided by 2, then inserting d upon 2 for r and squaring the bracket, we can show that the volume of a cone is pi d squared h divided by 12, but that's in terms of diameter. So volume of a cone in terms of diameter. So as I say, that proof was purely for reference. Let's consider an example. This question relates to a hopper that's in the form of an inverted cone and used within a production process, having a diameter d of 1.6 meters and a vertical height h of 2.1 meters. In part A, we've got to calculate the capacity of the hopper, stating the answer in terms of litres. And in part B, if the hopper is to be lined with lead, we've got to calculate the area of the lead required. Firstly, let's consider what is a hopper. Here are two pictures of a hopper on the left. If we have a vessel that's used for storage on a building site. And on the right, we have a piece of equipment. It's actually led on its side originally, but I've shown it in the vertical here. And it's these conical shapes here at the bottom that are analyzed as cones. Diagrammatically, I've tried to show the, the cones here in these orange lines. So that's the idealization being made here that the hopper is actually in the form of a cone. Just notice for reference that the hopper idealization would be preferable as a frustrum of a cone, where a frustrum is a cone with the top sliced off. So these are obviously inverted sections here, but there's a location where the cone is sliced off. So in actual fact, a frustrum is the preferable idealization, but that's a more complicated formula and something we will review in a later presentation. So returning to our example from part A, we know from the previous slide, volume of a cone is pi d squared h divided by 12. In a question, we're given the diameter, it's 1.6 meters. We're given the height is 2.1 meters. So we can calculate the volume, and that's in terms of meters cubed here. From our previous work, we know to calculate a volume in terms of liters given meters cubed, we simply multiply by 1,000. So 1.407 meters cubed is equivalent to 1,407 liters. There's 1,000 liters in one meter cubed. And in part B, we've got to calculate the curved surface area A here. And again, from our previous slide, that's pi dl divided by two. Notice it's just the curved surface area here. So I've ignored the pi d squared upon four part of that formula on the previous slide. 
from the formula here we've got to calculate the value of L, the slant length in this case, and to do that we need to calculate the radius. So the radius is obviously diameter divided by 2, so in this case the radius is 0 0.8 meters. Now we have the radius and the height from above. We can use Pythagoras theorem to calculate length L. Certain figures length L is 2.247 meters. So finally in this case we can calculate the curved surface area as pi multiplied by the diameter and multiplied by the length from above or divided by 2. So the curved surface area is 5.648 meters squared. So that's the illustration of calculating the volume and the curved surface area of a cone. Continuing with our standard formula, let's consider the pyramid. Here's the formula for the volume of a pyramid. It's area of the base multiplied by the vertical height divided by 3. If we want to calculate the surface area, A, then that's the area of the base. And we add to that the summation of the areas of the triangles that form the sides. To work out the area of these triangles that form the sides, we would need to work out the slant lengths shown here and here, labelled L. To calculate the value of L, we again use Pythagoras theorem. We can see the right angle triangle shown here. And that would basically be the B upon 2 side squared added to the vertical height here, H squared, and all square rooted, of course. So slightly more work required when calculating the surface area as opposed to calculating the volume. Let's consider an example. We're asked to find the volume of a symmetrical pyramid having a rectangular base of 6 metres by 4 metres and a vertical height of 10 metres. So the area of the base is simply 6 metres multiplied by 4 metres. So 24 meters squared. And then the volume V is the area of the base above multiplied by the vertical height. And all divided by 3. Inserting the values, area of the base is 24, vertical height is 10. Evaluating, that becomes 80 meters cubed. Let's now consider the sphere. Basically we're considering a football shape. The volume V is given as pi d cubed upon 6, and the surface area of the sphere A is pi d squared, where d is diameter, of course. Also consider a hemisphere, which is actually half of a sphere. The volume V is now pi d cubed upon 12, and the curved surface area A is pi d squared upon and just for reference here, I've shown the equations for the sphere and the hemisphere in terms of radius r, where the radius r is equal to the diameter divided by 2. So for a sphere, the volume formula becomes 4 pi r cubed divided by 3, and the surface area formula is 4 pi r squared and for the hemisphere the volume formula is equal to 2 pi r cubed divided by 3 and the curved surface area formula is 2 pi r squared. But in this presentation we'll mostly use the formulas in terms of diameter but the equivalent formulas in terms of radius are stated here for future reference. Let's consider an example so a concrete dome is in the form of a hemisphere. If the internal and external diameters are 4.8 metres and 5 metres respectively, then in part A we have to calculate the volume of the concrete that's used in the construction of the dome. And part B, if the inside surface of the dome is to be painted, We've got to calculate the area 
to be covered by the paint. I've just listed the formulae from the previous slide here for convenience. If you think you can attempt that example without further assistance, I'd encourage you to stop the presentation and attempt it now, but I'll show you the full solution on the following slide. So here's the example of the concrete dome in the form of the hemisphere. We're given the internal and external diameters in the question. And part A, we have to calculate the volume of the concrete to be used. The notation I'm using in the question, capital D, will be the external diameter. That's given as 5 metres in the question. And lowercase d is the internal diameter. And that's given as 4.8 metres in the question. So essentially what we're going to do to calculate the volume of the hemisphere, VHS I've labelled it here. So essentially we will calculate the volume of the outer dome, having diameter D. And we will subtract from that the volume of the inside hemisphere, having diameter lowercase d. On the next line, I simply factorise the equation because pi upon 12 is common to both terms here. And then inserting my outside and inside diameter, the volume of the dome or the hemisphere is 3.77 meters cubed. And that's the volume associated with this section through the dome shown here. Just for further clarity, I've tried to show the calculations here, hopefully easier to follow. So I'm calculating initially the volume of the outer dome, pi capital D cubed upon 12. And I'm subtracting from this the volume of the inner dome, the pi lowercase d cubed divided by 12. So that allows me to calculate the volume of the dome. And again, the volume associated with this cross-sectional area here. And just for reference, of course, we could factorise this volume formula for the dome because the pi upon 12 is common to both terms. So just for reference. And finally, part B wants us to calculate the inside surface area of the hemisphere or dome. So area of the hemisphere, I call it here. So that's the formula pi lowercase d squared divided by 2 because we're calculating the area of the inside surface of the dome, of course. So inserting my inside diameter 4.8, we can calculate the area of the inside surface. It's 36.19 meters squared. Let's now consider some questions from worksheet A of our workbook. These questions relate to calculating volumes and surface areas using standard formulae we've outlined previously. So question 1A is split into five parts. So part one, I've got to calculate the volume and the surface area of a cylinder having a diameter of 54 millimetres and a length of 86 millimetres. Part two, a rectangular prism has a base 36 by 18 millimetres and a height of 72 millimetres. We've got to calculate its volume. Part three, we're asked to determine the surface area and the volume of a cone having a 50 millimetres diameter base and a 75 millimetre height. Part four, we've got to calculate the volume and the surface area of a pyramid having a 9.5 centimetre square base and a height of 12 centimetres. Finally, part five, we have to find the volume and the surface area of a sphere, having a radius of 0 0.05 metres. The answers are shown in the bracket at the bottom of the slide. I would encourage you to start the presentation and attempt question 1A and the five parts shown but I will very briefly outline the solutions on the following slides. Don't forget we're using standard formula that's been shown on previous slides. So in question 1a, part one, we're asked to calculate the volume and the surface area of the cylinder 
given the diameter is 54 millimeters and the length is 86 millimeters. So this is part one, finding the volume. We have the diameter in the question. We have the height given in the question. We know the volume of a cylinder is pi d squared h divided by four. Inserting the values, the volume is 196,959 millimeters cubed. And question 1a, part one continued here. We're now calculating the surface area of the cylinder. So our standard formula for the surface area, we've got twice pi d squared upon four. Don't forget pi d squared upon four calculates the area of one flat end of the cylinder. And we add to that the pi d h, which of course is the curved surface area shown here. Just note for reference simplification here, this two will cancel with this four. So we end up with pi d squared upon two here. And inserting the values and evaluating the total surface area is 19,170 millimeters squared. Question 1a, part two. This is our rectangular prism. We're given the geometry in the question. I've called the dimension B for the base 18 millimeters, dimension D at the base 36 millimeters. So from that we can calculate the area of our rectangular prism. And we're told that the length or the height is 72 millimeters. So actually I've evaluated the area of the base, B times D first of all here. And finally to find the volume, we multiply the area by the length or the height of the prism and that evaluates to 46,656 millimeters cubed. This is a prismatic section the likes of which we analyzed in a previous presentation. Question 1a continued is part 3 here we've got to determine the surface area and the volume of a cone. It has a 50 millimeter diameter base and 75 millimeters height. So extract the information from the question. Base diameter capital D is 50 millimeters. So we have this value here. The height H, 75 millimeters, is dimension here. So we can calculate the volume from the formula pi d squared H divided by 12. Inserting the values, the volume is 49,087 millimeters cubed. Notice for reference, I've also shown the answer in terms of meters cubed here. And from our previous presentation, to convert from millimeters cubed to meters cubed, we divide by 10 to the 9. So in other words, our volume in meters cubed is 49087 times 10 to the power of negative 9. So be very careful when you're converting from millimeters cubed to meters cubed and vice versa. There's a 10 to the power of 9 difference between the values. Question 1a, part 3 continued. Calculating the surface area of the cone here. As stated previously, the surface area is the pi d squared upon 4. That's the area of the base of the cone. And we add to that the curved surface area given by pi dl divided by 2, where l is the slant length. And we need to calculate the slant length using Pythagoras' theorem. Inserting our height and our diameter into the equation, the slant length is 79.06 millimeters. Inserting the diameters into our formula and also now the slant lengths, we can now evaluate the surface area of the cone. It's 8,172.9 millimeters squared. And notice again, I've converted that to meters squared here, basically dividing millimeters squared by 10 to the power of 6. So that's 8172.9 times 10 to the negative 6 here. That's meter squared. Question 1a continue, part 4. We've got to calculate the volume and the surface area of the pyramid given the square base of 9.5 centimeters and the height of 12 centimeters. 
just notice I've converted the dimensions given in the question from centimeters to millimeters. So base dimension B is 95 millimeters and height H is 120 millimeters. So we can easily calculate the area of the base. It's square in this case, so 95 millimeters squared. And to find the volume, it's the area of the base multiplied by the vertical height, H given in the question, divided by three. So asserting the area of the base above and the height given above, we can evaluate the volume. It's 361 times 10 to the three millimeters cubed and divided by 10 to the power nine. That's the same as 361 times 10 to the negative six meters cubed. That's just for reference. Here's question 1a, part four continued. This time we're calculating the surface area of the pyramid. So the surface area A is equal to the area of the base added to the summation of the area of the triangles forming the pyramid. So in terms of our symbols, the total area is the B squared, the base squared, base dimension given here added to 4 times b times l divided by 2. Note the 4 in the equation is because there are 4 sides, as this is a square base pyramid. So we need to work out the slant length l, which we find from Pythagoras' theorem here. Certain the values for h and for b above, we can work out the slant length. So the total surface area of the pyramid is the dimension b squared for the base, and we add that to 4 times the base times the slant length divided by 2. There's our surface area in terms of millimetre squared. And I've also converted it to metre squared here. Question 1a part 5. We've got to calculate the volume and the surface area of the sphere. We're given a radius of 0 0.05 metres. So to calculate the volume, first of all, given the radius, 0 0.05 metres, I've calculated the diameter, 0 0.1 metres, and the volume is given as pi d cubed upon 6. It's certain the diameter. We can evaluate the volume. It's, it's 523.6 times 10 to the negative 6, which is cubed. Question 1a continues is part 5. This time we calculate the surface area of the sphere so the surface area is pi d squared so inserting the diameter area is equal to 0 0.03142 meters squared here are some further questions question 2a relates to calculating the surface area of a cylinder and a rectangular prism Questions 3a relates to calculating the volume of water in a rectangular fish tank, given the depth of the water in the tank. And question 4a, we've got a concrete base, given some geometry, how to calculate the volume of the concrete required. Answers are shown in the brackets on the right hand side. I would encourage you to stop the presentation. And attempt these questions, but I'll briefly show you the solutions on the following slides. Question 2a, part 1, solution. We're asked to calculate the surface area of a cylinder of 95 millimeters diameter and 0.15 meters in length, or height shown here. Just be careful here, the diameter is stated in millimetres, so I've converted my length or height h from metres given in the question to millimetres. Here's the equation we were given to calculate the total surface area of a cylinder. Just notice this is 2 in the numerator, as cancelled with the 4 in the denominator. So on the next line we have just 2 in the denominator. I'll let you review the calculations at your own pace, but the area is given here in millimetre squared. 
And just for reference, this is question 2a part 1 again, but an alternative solution. Just a slight variation on the previous slide. If we consider this line of our calculations from the previous slide, all I've shown here is a factorized form of that line because pi d is common to both of these terms. So we can factorize on pi d as shown in this equation. So it's exactly the same equation, just in a factorized form. If you insert the values from above, we can calculate the total surface area as being exactly the same as that above. Just notice in a slightly different format to what's shown here. But that's just for reference to show you how factorization can be used to slightly simplify the numerical calculations. Question 2a part 2 solution. We're finding the surface area this time of a rectangular prism. We're given the geometry 84 millimeters. I've called that B dimension. 64 millimeters. I've called that my D dimension and the 38 millimeters I've called that my H dimension for the height. Don't forget we are calculating the total surface area here A. So there are six sides to consider in the calculation. This shows the factorized form here. Again I'll let you review the solution at your own pace. The area is shown here again in millimetre squared. Question 3a is the rectangular fish tank given some geometry in millimetres here. We're informed that the tank contains water to a depth of 300 millimetres and to calculate the volume of the water. So, so be careful here you're not calculating the volume of the actual fish tank but the volume of the water that's contained in the fish tank. So we're given that the depth of the water is 300 millimetres. So that's the value that should be used for the depth, not 350 as some students use. Just be careful how you work out the volume of the water in the tank. Again, I state it in terms of millimetres cubed and metres cubed for reference. In question 4a is just a rectangular prism. Just be careful of the geometry it's given in terms of meters and millimeters. So I've converted my length or my height here into meters. Again, I'll let you review this at your own pace. Three more questions here. Question 5a, question 6a, question 7a. Answers again are given in the brackets. I would encourage you to start the presentation and attempt these questions, but I'll show you the full solutions on the following slides. Just be very careful, read the questions carefully. With question 5a solution, we're asked to calculate the volume and the surface area of an open top cylinder. Be careful, it's open top in this particular case. Also be careful with the geometry. The diameter is stated as 800 millimeters, but the height is stated as 1.2 meters. So I've converted my diameter shown here from 800 millimeters into meters. My height H is 1.2 meters as stated in the question. I've shown here for reference the formula for a cylinder we have the volume formula shown here, pi d squared upon 4 multiplied by the height h, h shown here. But be careful with the surface area formula A here. This is for the total surface area of a cylinder, so that includes a top and a bottom. However, in this case, we have an open top cylinder, so we will ignore this two here in our equation. So to work out the total surface area for an open top cylinder, it's pi d squared upon 4, the area of one end, added to pi d h, the curved surface area. So question 5a solution continued. 
This is calculation of the volume V 0 0.603 meters cubed. And here's the calculation for the surface area of the open top cylinder. Here's the area of the base calculated here. The curved surface area calculated here. So the total surface area is simply the base area added to the curved surface area. So summating the total surface area of the open top cylinder is stated here in meters squared and for reference I've shown it in millimeters squared here. Question 6a, we're calculating the volume of oil contained in a drum of 85 centimetres diameter and 1.5 metres in height. So again, I've converted my centimetres straight away into metres, divided by 100. And then evaluate the cylinder volume. Solution shown here. Question 7a, we're given a cylinder has a height of 69 millimetres and we're also given the volume in terms of millimetres cubed here. We've got to find the diameter, so some transposition required in this particular case. So knowing the formula for volume of a cylinder, pi d squared L divided by 4. And again, notice I've used L here but labelled it as H over here. H and L tend to be interchangeable terms. So from the volume formula of pi d squared L or pi d squared H divided by 4, I can rearrange my equation to find the diameter. So in other words, from this line here, multiplying throughout by 4 and dividing by pi L gives us a square root of, in brackets, 4V divided by pi multiplied by L. And certain the values of diameter is 253.4 millimetres. Question 8a, which is a conical hopper, which essentially is analysed as a cone here. We've got to find the volume of the cone. Question 9a is what's called an open trough of 2 metres length has a cross section 300 millimeters deep and is 500 millimeters wide at the top of the trough and 400 millimeters wide at the bottom of the trough. We've got to calculate the volume and the surface area of the sheet metal required to make the trough. The trough can be considered to have no ends. And if it helps, here's a three-dimensional sketch of the trough. It's an open trough and it's two meters in length. And question 10a. A hemisphere has a volume of 12,000 millimeters cubed. We've got to find its diameter. So some transposition required there. And also we've got to calculate the area of the curved surface of the hemisphere. The answers are shown in the brackets. I'd encourage you to stop the presentation and attempt these questions. But I'll show you some selected solutions on the following slides. So question 8a, here's a solution. It's a fairly straightforward question here. Just calculating the volume of the cylindrical hopper, so, which of course is assumed to be in the form of a cone. So we have the formula for the cone, and we can evaluate the volume of the cone in meters cubed and also in millimeters cubed here. I'll let you review this solution at your own pace. The answer shown in the question is stated to three decimal places and in meters cubed. And here's question 9a, solution. The first part of the solution is to calculate the volume of the open trough. So the trough is open at both ends. So essentially the trough is a trapezium section, this section here. 
the trapezoidal and we will calculate the area of this end. Extracting information from the question, we're given the length is 2 metres. We stated the height of the trough is actually 300 millimetres deep. I've shown it is 0.3 metres here. We've got the width at the top, I've labelled that B here. That's 500 millimetres wide. I've shown that as 0.5 metres. And we have the width at the bottom, lowercase b. That was 400 millimetres. Shown that as 0.4 metres here. So to calculate the area of a trapezium, or a trough in this case, that's the area of the end. It's the dimension at the top of the trough, added to the dimension at the bottom of the trough, multiplied by the height, and then divided by 2. Inserting the values, the area of the end is 0.135 metres squared. This is basically a prismatic section, so to calculate the volume V, it's simply the area multiplied by the length of 2 metres. So 0.135 multiplied by 2, so 0.27 metres cubed, or 0.27 times 10 to the power of 9 millimetres cubed. That's the volume of the trough. Here's question 9a, the solution continued. This is part 2 now. We're going to calculate the surface area of this open-ended trough. So, firstly, we need to calculate the lengths of this side, labelled x, and add it to the length of the base of the trough, shown here, 0.4 metres, and of course add it to this side of length x. Once we've calculated the peripheral distance here of the trough, we simply multiply it by the length of the trough, which is 2 metres, and that will calculate the surface area of the trough. But first of all, we need to calculate length x, is the slant length of the side. We're going to use Pythagoras' theorem to calculate x. So slant length x is equal to the square root of the depth of the section, or the height of the trough here, of 0.3 metres. So h is 0.3 metres. And from the geometry, we can calculate dimension D, shown here. Dimension D calculates to be 0.05 metres from the above calculation. So little d is 0.05. So calculating slant length x, it's 0.3041 metres. Now we can determine the area of the two long slides of the trough. So area of this side and the area of this side. So I call it A2, and it's simply going to be 2 times dimension x, calculated above, and the length of the trough, length is 2 metres here. Inserting dimensions x and l into the formula, we can evaluate the area of the two sides. It's 1.21655 metres squared. Calculating the area of the bottom of the trough, AB here, that's simply the length of the trough multiplied by dimension B. And dimension B is 0.4 metres. So inserting the values, the area of the bottom of the trough is 0.8 metres squared. So the total surface area of the trough is the area of the two sides added to the area of the base. So inserting the values from above, the total surface area is 2.0167 metres squared. Converting to millimetres squared, that's 2.0167 times 10 to the power of 6 millimetres squared. And suppose, for example, we were going to spray paint the outer surface of 100 troughs, then knowing the outer surface area would allow us to calculate the quantity of paint required. And finally, for your interest, I'll leave you with some further questions. Question 11a through to question 13a on our worksheet. The answers are stated as usual in the brackets at the right-hand side. But I'll let you review these solutions at your own pace. 
Here's a bibliography used to help generate this presentation. Well, I hope this has been of use to you. Thank you for viewing.